Hola y bienvenidos a otra lección de español. Hoy nosotros vamos a hablar de palabras afirmativas y palabras negativas. You might be wondering, what are affirmative and negative words? What are palabras afirmativas y palabras negativas? Well, we're talking about words like always and never. Everybody, nobody. Some, not a single one. So we're going to be talking about those words today. Now, before we get into those words, I have to do a quick review of something in Spanish 1 because it'll help us to better understand something we're going to do with algún, which means some. Okay, first, let's do this quick refresher. Oh, it looks like my board's going to be lagging today. The problem of recording a screen and writing at the same time. El libro, you probably remember that, the book. Now then, after we talked about el libro, then we started talking about un libro. You might remember that this one, El Libro, was a definite article because we definitely know which book we're talking about. And this one, Un Libro, we called an indefinite article because it was undefined as to which book we're talking about, just a book. So if we were to talk to somebody and say, erase this here. If we were to talk to somebody and say, Tienes un libro? That person might respond with, let's make it more of a dialogue, Si, sí, tengo un libro. Okay, and that would make sense, but it sounds a little mechanical. Do you have a book? Yes, I have a book. ¿Tienes un libro? Si, sí, tengo un libro. Okay, but we still use that un libro. Well, what's going on here is we've got, we've got un with a noun, so a book. But down here, if we wanted to not say book again, if we were to get rid of our noun, okay, so there's no noun here. Do you have a book? Yes, I have a. No, we wouldn't do that in English. What would we say? Yes, I have one. Yeah, I have one. Si tengo uno. Okay, so in English we switch from a to one. Totally different looking words. In Spanish all we do is we take that un and we switch it to uno. So when it has a noun, it's un libro. When there's no noun, it becomes like one. Yes, I have one. Si, sí, tengo uno. Tienes un libro? Si, sí, tengo uno. And I only mention that because it's going to come in handy in today's lesson. Okay, let's get into today's lesson and let's start with the one that I'm referring to. Okay, our first word today Algún. Algún. Now, algún in, is closest to the English um, if we were to say some or any. For example, tengo algunas grapadoras. We'll try to use vocab that we're studying right now. Grapadoras. Tengo algunas grapadoras. I have some staplers. Um, or we can say something like algunos armarios no funcionan. Running out of space. Algunos armarios no funcionan. Now notice it's masculine and plural, so masculine and plural. The, this algunos is going to match in gender and number with the noun that it modifies. There we go with that grammar phrase again. So since armarios is masculine and plural, this is masculine and plural. Since grapadoras is feminine and plural, algunas is going to be feminine and plural. So this algún changes. Now notice, algunas has no accent in it. No accent. That's because and we'll talk about this in other lessons. I've already got a video out there floating around about accents that goes in depth. When it ends in NS or vowel, the stress, algunas, algunas, naturally falls on the next to last syllable. So we don't need to write an accent. The only time we write an accent in Spanish is if we're breaking that rule of NS or vowel next to last syllable. I mean, there are a few other times too, like the diacritic accent and stuff, but for now, we'll just look at that rule. In this case, it ends in NS or vowel, so that means that it should be on the next to last syllable, which would be the A, al, al. But it's not, it's over the U. We say algún. We don't say algún, algún. No, we say algún. Because it's breaking that rule, 
It's kind of like in elementary school when the teacher puts a check next to your name when you're misbehaving. We put a little accent mark here to tell the reader, hey, we're breaking the rules, it's going to be algún. And I don't want to go totally into accents right now, there's something else there out there for that. Okay, anyway, algún accent, algunas, algunos. Okay. So, okay. Like we would say algunas sillas, I would say algún libro. Algún libro. Okay. ¿Tienes algún libro? ¿Hay algún libro por ahí? Sí. Hay alguno. So in other words, same thing. When there's a noun, see that, you see that part that looks like the un we did before? It's still there. When there's a noun, un. When there's no noun, alguno. Okay. ¿Algún libro? Alguno. Sí, hay alguno. Um, alguno, por ahí. Um, what else was the guy going to say about that? Okay, so that's algún. We'll do some exercises with that in class. Algún. Algún, some, any. Okay, a couple, of, a couple others. In fact, I'll just list the ball right now. We have algún and its variations. Some, any. Okay, we also have algo, something. We also have, let's go, alguien. We talked about this in class the other day. I think I might have done it, um, maybe not. I was going to say I might have done it in a previous lesson, but I don't think so. Maybe as we were doing vocab, I talked about how alguien kind of looks like the Spanish word quien, which means who or whom. So it makes it easy to remember that alguien is somebody. Okay, so we have alguien, algún. Let's see, I, th I think that's it for those, for the ones that look alike. And then we got the three that aren't so confusing, the three that don't aren't algs. So the other two affirmative words is siempre, which if any of you know Marines out there, you've seen semper fi, semper fidelis, comes from the Latin always faithful, always true. Semper is the Latin uh, parent the father of the word siempre in Spanish, which means, which means always. And then our last one is something that you add in Spanish, one. So we won't spend much time on that, también, also. So, algún, algo, alguien, siempre, también. And I might as well write out here that this is always. Okay. Siempre tenemos exámenes en la clase de español. Alguien tiene mi diccionario. No tengo mi diccionario. Uh, hay algo en mi zapato. Ah, hay algo en mi zapato. Un momento. Uh, hay algunos, algunos de ustedes, algunos de ustedes entienden la palabra siempre. Algunos, some of you, algunos de ustedes. Uh, hay algo que quiero decirte. There's something I want to tell you. Hay algo que quiero decirte. Alguien siempre también. Okay, that's long enough on that. Let's, let's move on to the negatives. Let's focus on the negative. Um, see, negative words. We have nadie. And these are words that you may have seen before. Probably have. Nobody. Nadie tiene diccionario. Nadie tiene teléfono. No hay nadie aquí. In fact, that's a good one to mention before we go on. No hay nadie. When, we, when we're using negatives, you, you wouldn't say there is nobody. We keep it all negative. Once we're negative, we like to be 100% negative. So nadie, nobody, no hay nadie. There is not nobody. There is not. You wouldn't say there is nobody. You would say there is not nobody in Spanish. We keep it all negative. No hay nadie. No hay nadie en la sala de clases. No hay nadie que me comprenda. No hay nadie. No hay nadie. Que okay, nadie. Next one. Many of us have heard people that don't even speak Spanish often know this one. Nada. Nothing. 
nothing, nada, nada, zip, zip, nada, zero. Um, I think that's a line from Three Amigos when El Guapo says what they're going to get, something like that. Nada, nothing. Um, now, remember we had the positive word, algún? Well, let me give you the Spanish opposite of it. Sorry, mixing cases, capital lower. Deal with it. Ningún. No, um, you know, your book, your book is going to tell you no, not, none, any. No, not, none, any. And that's fine, but I think I mentioned this in the last video. I find it easier to think of it as not a single. In fact, not a single one. Because we have that un at the end, so you have not single one. Not a single one. No hay ningún libro. No hay, no hay ninguna estudiante. No hay ningún estudiante. Whether you're talking about male or female group. No hay ninguna silla aquí. Then our last couple here. Nunca, which is the opposite of siempre. What was siempre? Okay, so if nunca is the opposite, it means never. Siempre was always, nunca is never. And our last one, a mí también, that was positive. No, let's go negative. Tampoco. Tampoco. Neither or neither. Okay. Nadie, nobody, nada, nothing, ningún, not a single one, nunca, never, tampoco. Okay. ¿Tienes mucho dinero? A ver. No, no tengo nada. ¿Tienes un bolígrafo? Ah, sí tengo. Ah, tengo algunos bolígrafos. Ah, ¿ahora? Lo siento, no tengo ninguno. Or, no tengo ningún bolígrafo. No tengo ninguno, no tengo ningún. Ok. ¿Vienes mucho a este lugar? No, no vengo nunca. I never come here. Nunca vengo aquí. No vengo nunca. Okay. ¿Tiene, ¿Tienes muchos amigos? No, no tengo ningún amigo. ¿Te gusta, ¿Te gusta dibujar? No, no me gusta dibujar. ¿No? A mí tampoco. Me neither. A mí tampoco. Okay. So those are our negatives. Let's take another glance at our positives. Our positives again, algún, some, algo, something, alguien, somebody, siempre, always, también. Okay, we're going to practice these in class. I know this isn't a good thing to really get it into your brains, so we're going to work on it in class, but I wanted to get you guys familiar with it, um, get familiar with these words. I suggest you take a couple minutes and study these words and get to know them, okay? Don't just be like, oh, I'm done with the lesson, but no, go back, rewind. Press play again, watch them again, see if you can remember these words as I'm writing them, see if you can get them before they're there. Okay, now I promised you, or I asked you to write down three things at the beginning of each, I'm sorry, asked you to write down three things at the end of each chapter. So let's do this. How about if you just write down the translations of these three sentences? You ready? Here we go. First sentence. What would this be in English? Number one. ¿Hay alguien que quiere hablar conmigo? ¿Hay alguien que quiere hablar conmigo? Again, number one, you're just writing down what the English would be. ¿Hay alguien que quiere hablar conmigo? Okay, number two. Tú siempre quieres ir al cine. Yo nunca quiero ir al cine. Tú siempre quieres ir al cine. Yo nunca quiero ir al cine. Last time. Tú siempre quieres ir al cine. Yo nunca quiero ir al cine. And let's just do one more here. Number three. No hay ningún estudiante en la sala de clases. No hay ningún estudiante en la sala de clases. Last time. No hay ningún estudiante en la sala de clases. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. We'll see you next time. Ciao.